Shot, Shot says spend stories. The dog. I knew somebody was in the lodge the minute I hit the clearing. I'd been away all day hunting down an elusive deer and had started back empty-handed. I saw the faint wisp of smoke curling upward from the field stone chimney and drifting off into the gathering twilight. I remembered having put out that fire that morning. Instinct, I pulled the bone on my Savage 3030 and slid it home. Then I kicked the door. <laughs> All right, get your hands up. What the? <gasps> I nearly dropped my rifle. She'd been standing before the fireplace and had spun around as I barged in. She shrank backward at the sight of the gun pointing at her. A, uh, a girl. Oh, you, you frightened me. Is this your cabin? I just stood there staring at her. She was a vision of loveliness. The most beautiful creature I'd ever seen. Her blonde hair catching the firelight felt like a golden waterfall about her bare shoulders. She clutched the borrowed bedsheet tightly about her so that it accented the soft flowing curves of her shapely body. I said, is this your cabin? Huh? Oh yes, yes it is. Behind her, a makeshift clothesline strung before the fireplace held pink lacy underthings, a pair of sheer stockings, a light blue blouse, and a dark blue skirt. Below, a pool of water rippled. I, I was lost. I fell in the stream out there. Your door was open. So, lost? What's a girl like you doing up here in the first place? My father owns a lodge like this, out there somewhere. I came up alone for a rest. This morning, I wandered away and couldn't find my way back. I got panicky. So you started running only? It wasn't in the right direction. She dropped her eyes and smiled, her soft lips parting, revealing white even teeth. I guess that's why it had. I wandered all day. Then I saw your cabin. I thought it was mine. Why? And you didn't see the stream? She shook her head. Uh-uh. I got soaked to my skin. I built the fire and, oh, I hope you don't mind. I borrowed a sheet off the bed in there. Lucky thing with me, busted in here like she started snatching her clothes off the makeshift line. I'll get into my things. They must be dry. Hold it a minute. I moved toward her. She stopped as if she suddenly been frozen. I reached out and touched her clothes. They're still wet. You'll catch a death of cold if you put them back on. I'll lend you something to wear. Th -th thank you. I went into the bedroom and got a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Here, these are to do till tomorrow. Tomorrow? I nodded, pointing out the window. It's getting dark out. We'd be crazy to try to find your father's cabin tonight. You'll have to stay here till morning. Oh. She took the clothes and went into the bedroom and shut the door. I smiled, thinking about all the books I read with situations like this. I'd never believe it could happen except in books. Alone with a beautiful girl in a cabin deep in the woods. You must be hungry. Starved. I went into the kitchen and lit the kerosene stove. Then I started opening some cans. She came in after a while. Here, let me do that. Say, cross, she had glided across the kitchen floor, barefoot, except for where the waist wrinkled up under the belt. My jeans fit her nicely, and the t-shirt, well, it looked as if though it had been painted onto her curvaceous body. As long as we're going to spend the night together, we might as well introduce ourselves. I'm Kathy Maxwell. Bob Ain. Maxwell, eh? Can't say I've as if I've heard that name mentioned down in the village. I saw her knuckles whiten as she gripped the knife. She was using it to cut the bread. Daddy just bought the cabin last month. It used to belong to, to... Oh dear, I can't remember their name. That's okay. We'll find We ate in silence. Kathy seemed nervous. She started at each little sound out. I studied her. She was 20, maybe 21 with the kind of face you'd see on a magazine covers. She saw me staring at her and smiled. Tell me about yourself, Bob. Mary, got a girl? No to both questions. You, her face stopped. Not anymore. I was engaged, but well, that's all over with now. I, I came up here to forget. Oh, you break it off or him? She got up from the table and moved into the living room. She looked around. Me, it was a big mistake. Got a cigarette? Sure. Here, she curled up on the couch before the fire and I bent over and lit her cigarette. She drew in the smoke, pursed her lips and blew it out into my face. 
impishly. But why talk about what's over and done with? Why not talk about what's yet to begin? Meaning? She looked into my eyes invitingly. Meaning us. It's it's pretty dark out there. I don't think I'd run. I wouldn't want you to, Kathy. I started to back off to sit down in the chair nearby, but she patted the couch cushion beside her. Not there, Bob. Here, by me. She was making things difficult for me. I slid down beside her and she put her head on my shoulder. She stared into the fire and beyond it, smiling. It's nice here, like this. Just the two of us. Kathy, I... She put her fingers to my lips. She shook her head, whispering softly, her chest rising and falling with each breath she drew. Don't say anything, Bob. Just spoil this. Kiss me. Kathy. I pulled her to me and she came anxious, almost savagely. Her lips were warm and eager and she pressed against me as we clung to each other. Bob, darling. Baby. That night, Kathy was a furnace of consuming passion, and I was her stoker. Toward dawn, the fire had died to a pile of burning embers. The cabin had chilled, and Kathy shivered as I held her in my arms. I'll put on another lock. No, don't. Hold me. She was asleep. I went into the bedroom and got a blanket and covered her. Then... I stirred up the fire and put a few logs on and sat down on the chair and lit my pipe. I watched the flames leaping hungrily, licking at the dry fuel. I looked at Kathy, beautiful, desirable Kathy. I was wide awake. My mind was racing at top speed, filled with a million churning thoughts. Kathy, Kathy, all my life I've looked for her, all my life. And now she's here, beside me, and she's mine. I flipped on the radio and turned it to the local station, and the music came up slowly, filling the room. And now, for the latest news, police are combing the countryside north of here in search of... The news announcer's raspy voice interrupted my reverie. I reached for the knob to turn it off. In search of a young woman who escaped from the state hospital for the criminally insane yesterday. Citizens are warned to stay indoors. This woman is dangerous. Kathy stirred. I turned down the volume. She is five foot four inches tall, 22 years old, with natural blonde hair, last seen by a hunter in the wooded section east of the state highway. Dressed in the institution's regular blue uniform. However, she will probably attempt to rid herself of these telltale clothes. Blue uniform? <gasps> and she's in an area? I stared at the blue blouse and skirt, hanging on a line near the fireplace. The announcer continued. Originally committed to the state hospital for the cold-blooded stabbing of the man to whom she was engaged. This woman is deemed capable of killing again. All precautions should be taken. Good lord. My blood froze in my veins. I looked at Kathy. She fit the description perfectly, and she did have that blue outfit. Was Kathy the maniac they were looking for? And, and I've been here with her, alone with her. Bob? The radio had awakened her. I snapped it off. I wonder how much she heard. <sighs> Was that the news? Did they hmm, say anything about me? Huh? Why should they? No one knows you're lost. She said up queerly. She looked at me. Uh, of course. I, I forgot. How silly of me. Kathy, your clothes are dry. Don't you want to put them on? Uh-uh. I like these. Come on. It's getting light out. I started for the door. Kathy followed me. Where are we going, Bob? To find your cabin, of course. We were outside the door now. Kathy caught my arm. I could feel her fingernails digging in. I don't have to go back, Bob. I can stay here for a while. Don't you want me to? After all, we are engaged now, aren't we? Sure, Kathy, sure. It all added up. The uniform she didn't want to put back on. Her description, her phony story of her father's cabin, her slip about the news broadcast. And now, now wanting to leave and us being engaged. Kathy was the escaped maniac the police were looking for, and she was capable of killing again. I knew what I had to do. Bob, wait. I slammed that door and locked it. Kathy stood outside, dumbfounded. Bob, let me in! I don't understand! Don't you? I know what you are, Kathy. She started to cry. Last night, it didn't mean anything to you. Not a thing, honey. Beat it, huh? I sat down in my chair, facing the door with my 30-30 across my lap. Suddenly, Kathy began to pound on the door furiously, shouting, 
Bob! Oh, Lord! Let it in! It won't work, baby. It won't work. Now scram! And then Kathy screamed. It was an ear-splitting shriek that made me sh- <laughs> She is certainly off her rocker. Then, sight outside, I could hear her moving around. I wasn't falling for anything. I waited. After a while, a sickly finger of red reached in under the door and pulled out over the floor. Good Lord! Blood! I leaped to the door and flung it open. I stared down at Kathy's nude white body with the knife sticking out of her neck and the coarse blue uniform flung carelessly over her with the stenciled letters State Hospital for the Criminally Insane. Kathy! My God! At the edge of the clearing, a figure with blonde hair dressed in my blue jeans and t-shirt was just disappearing into the thick woods.